Hi everyone, how are you going? I hope this topic isn't too weird or dorky. I wanted to share a video about bread tins, bread pans, especially for whole grain sourdough baking. I have got quite a collection and I've sort of audited them recently and I thought this was a really good chance to just kind of go through all the different types and what my experience has been with them, what I think of them and which ones are my favorites. There are some really important tips to know about the different types, so I'll share those as I go through. So I've got three main categories of bread pans here. I have got metal pans, I have got glass pans, and I also have some ceramic loaf pan bakers as well. You will notice straight off that I don't have any silicon loaf pans. I don't have anything against silicon bakeware, but for me personally, I don't like the way it's so flexible. I like a really solid pan that, you know, feels solid in my hand. I find that a lot easier to get the bread out that way. The other thing with silicon is it's not very conductive material, so it doesn't heat up very fast and it also doesn't hold the heat. So I find that the bottom of my bread just never cooks very well in silicon, so I, I don't use it. So I'll talk about the metal pans first. I do have quite a collection. <laughs> metal pans are great. They are usually the most affordable type of bread pan. They're very durable. It's very hard to break them and they're very accessible. Usually this is the kind of the easiest kind of bread pan that you can find. These two pans are actually Aldi brand Crofton brand pans that I found in an op shop. These were about like between five and ten dollars each. I found them on two separate occasions and I really love them. These do have a non-stick coating and a lot of bread tins will have non-stick coating and that's probably the main drawback about metal tins to be honest. Not everybody likes to bake in non-stick but you can use a paper liner if you like. Personally I'm okay with non-stick baking as long as you follow the directions and not put your oven too high. The maximum I think for most non-stick bakeware is about 220 to 30 degrees Celsius and um, I always you know just be really careful with the surface you don't want to damage it that's when you know these coatings can become problematic. The old-fashioned bread tins like this one this is a, a willow a vintage willow cake pan which I love this is the kind of bread pan that my grandmother would have baked with this you can I don't know if you can see up close but there is you can see where it's rusted a little bit if there's no coating on the tin they, they are going to corrode depending on the material so you know coatings are, are okay you just need to be careful with them aside from their durability and affordability and accessibility Metal pans are great because metal as a material is highly conductive so it heats up really fast. Uh, it does cool down pretty fast as well. It doesn't hold much heat because it's not a thick material but um, it is highly conductive so it's going to be very responsive to high temperatures in your oven. So whatever you're baking in your metal pan is going to respond to any changes in temperature that you set on your oven which is I, th I think a good thing. The other benefit to metal pans is that if you get um, two pans like this, these are Reiko pans that I bought years ago. They have been painted black on the bottom because I used to use them in my solar oven and you need to have black coated things. This is special black paint uh, for pot belly stoves. But if you've got two metal pans with uh, handles like this, you can put them one on top of each other like that and use these um, bulldog clips, clip them together and you've got a lid not only for baking so you can keep the steam in around your loaf as you're baking it but also just as a lid for when you're proofing your dough so the dough doesn't dry out. If I had less storage space I would probably just stick with two tins like this and use the one on top of the other method and that's a really simple way to bake your bread and get the benefits of steam around your loaf which gives it a better crust and a better rise generally speaking. You've probably seen in a lot of my videos I use this. This is a Baccarat um, granite. It's actually a cast aluminium baker so it's very light um, the reason why I do use this rather than covered bread pans, not always but often, is that this can fit a loaf tin inside it just like that. You just 
pop it in and then pop the lid on and, and it heats through really, really well. But I can also use this for freeform loaves. So this is a bit of a dual purpose. I can put my, my freeform loaf on there and use this as a lid upside down. So this is really handy. But if you don't have a roaster like that and you still want to use steam around your loaves, which I do recommend, get two tins like this with a, with a handle that you can clip together and that's the next best thing. The other option that you do have, especially if you live in the USA, is to get a Pullman pan like this with a lid. This is a USA pan brand Pullman pan. It's a nine by four by four inch pan and um, the lid just slides off. This comes built in with a lid. I bought these recently because I'm working on a sandwich loaf recipe that I wanna make in, in these pans. And I had wanted to try these for years and kept putting it off and I thought, no, I'm gonna get a couple of these. So I got two of them in a pack and these are very heavy gauge metal, very high quality, folded on the ends, just like these, um, like these Aldi ones. And these also have a non-stick coating. Now, I think these are a bit heavier metal than any of any of my other bread pans. But the benefit of this, you know, if you just want to get one pan that one size fits all, you can get one of these as well because they come with the lid. So again, you can use this lid to cover your dough while it's proofing to stop it from drying out. And then when it goes into the oven, it has its steam cover on as well. And you can make a smaller loaf that, that has a round top inside this, or you can make the loaf just the right size so that it fills it right up and you get the nice square sandwich bread shape. Just finally, I'll show you these. These are very, very light, very light pressed aluminium pans from Ikea. These make a really large loaf. They're too big for me normally, so I don't use them very often. And I actually use these probably more for, you know, like meatloaf type dishes, lentil loaf and nut roasts and things like that. But these can also be used. This is just another example of one that you can clip together and you've got a lid and a base all in one which is why I tend to buy my pans in sets of two. It's become a bit of a habit of mine. I've got pretty much two of everything. So overall, metal bread pans are fantastic. They're very durable, very affordable and accessible. They heat up really quickly. And if you look after them, if you've got an old one like this, keep them clean and dry in between uses and they will last you a lifetime, if not more. You might be wondering at this point, how do I know what size recipe to use in my pans? That is a really good question. A lot of times I hear people refer to, is it a standard size loaf pan? And I think, I don't know, because there doesn't seem to be any standard from where I'm looking. So I have this trick for how to work out the best sort of size dough for your bread pans. I'll show you that just after I've talked about the glass and the ceramic pans. Next, I wanna talk about glass pans. Glass pans, bread pans, are less commonly used from what I've seen. A lot of people don't like them. They're obviously less durable. You know, it's going to break if I drop it, not like a, a metal pan. But personally speaking, I really love baking in glass pans and I have to admit, it's probably mostly because of the look of them. I just love the aesthetic of glass and I think the bread just always looks so nice. This one in particular is probably one of my favorite pans out of all of them. This is a USA Pyrex pan with a, a beautiful fluted edge that I bought in a charity shop, in an op shop. You can see there it says, I don't know if you can see, Pyrex USA. I've also got these two Pyrex loaf pans, matching pair. I bought these new for about 20 bucks each. These are French Pyrex. So I don't know if you can see, but it's made in France Pyrex in there. These are really lovely as well. Glass pans are really effective, just as effective as any other type of bread pan, um, but you do need to know a couple of tricks. Obviously take a bit of care with them. In terms of uh, not breaking them, thermal shock, it's important to not shock them thermally. So if you're going to proof your dough in the fridge in a glass pan, which you can do, no trouble at all, just don't, don't put a cold dough in a cold glass pan into a hot oven. I would always go straight from the fridge into a cold start oven. 
and just turn your oven on and it will heat up the pan and the bread all at the same time so it won't be a big shock for the glass or you can just proof your dough as you normally would and just proof it at room temperature and then put it into a hot oven so room temperature to hot oven is okay cold fridge to cold oven is okay but cold fridge to hot oven it might be okay but I wouldn't try it <laughs> the other best tip uh, about glass pans well actually I should just say a bit about the material glass is nowhere near as conductive as a material as metal is so it's not going to heat up anywhere near as quickly it just doesn't conduct heat as fast however it has got far more thermal mass than metal than a thin metal does anyway and what that means is it holds the heat unlike silicon which is not very conductive either, but doesn't hold the heat. This is not very conductive, it's slower to heat, but it holds the heat once it's hot. So what that means is if you've got the right baking conditions and you've, you've got enough heat, you will get a lovely, nice, even browning once you do get this pan hot enough. The only problem I see that people have with glass pans is that sometimes the dough can stick. But there are two things, three things you can do to avoid that. The first thing is grease them really well, either with a nonstick spray or a pan release, or you can use oil or butter with some flour sprinkled on the top. Never use just oil. If you just smear olive oil, depends on the oil, but if you just smear oil inside a pan like this and then put your dough in, it will stick. You need to spray just dust a bit of flour on top of that oil and that will help it the other thing too is I don't have any dough on hand to show you but I've got this piece of olive bread when you are putting your dough into the pan squeeze your dough together and then put it in like that without it touching the sides if your dough touches the sides of the pan as it goes down, it will actually rub off the grease and then those sides of the dough are gonna stick. So just squeeze it together and put it in the bottom and then let it fall out and then it will you will protect your nice grease layer around the sides because these are the sections here where it will stick and it's often because people put the dough in and it just rubs the sides and rubs the oil off the other trick is if your bread does stick in your glass pan just leave it untouched for about 10 minutes after you bring it out of the oven and that will just create a little bit of steam against the crust and that will help release it and it will be much more easy to just pop out you don't have to dig out your bread out of your glass pans they will just pop out nicely just be patient and give it about 10 minutes Glass pans are great too in that they don't have any coatings. I think that's one reason that I love them. They, they're never going to corrode. They don't need any coating to stop them from rusting. They don't need nonstick coating if you grease them properly. They're just kind of pure and simple and I really, really love that about them. Plus I think they're very beautiful. Okay, last but not least, we have the ceramic collection. These ceramic bakers are not necessary at all. Honestly, if you just want to bake good bread, a couple of metal pans is all you need. But I'm a bit of a fanatic. This is a lifelong hobby of mine. And, you know, you do tend to put a bit of extra uh, resources into your most love hobbies. These two pans here, this one here, Emile Henri, France. This is a very large loaf baker. These two pans come in black, white and red, but I really love the black ones. This is also an Emile Henri bread baker. You can see on the back, Let's see if I can turn it over without dropping it. It's made in France. These are ceramic, so they are glazed on the inside, but not on the bottom or on the inside of the lid. And they're quite heavy, they're obviously not as durable as a metal pan either. They're probably less durable than glass, but the beauty of these, if you can afford them, they're really expensive. They are not very conductive, so they're slow to heat up, but they hold their thermal mass really, really well. Imagine baking your bread in these. It's like baking in an enclosed pizza stone. So you've got this 
or a clay oven or something. You're essentially creating a little mini clay oven inside your oven when you bake your bread in these. This one here um, has holes in the lid, which I kind of wish that it didn't because it's going to allow steam to escape. And this one is not my favorite because of that, but it's still an amazing pan and I do use it sometimes. This one I'll talk about next. This one cost me about $15. I bought this in an antique shop. It's cracked. It's, um, it's seen better days. This is actually a Swedish uh, Rostrand gratina. It's actually a casserole dish but it has a beautiful shape and I just adore this shape for bread. And it's ceramic and it has a lid, so it keeps your dough moist through the proof so it's not gonna dry out and it will keep the steam in while you're baking. So I wanted to show you this example because basically any dish that you like the shape of that has a lid, you can bake your bread in it. You know, it doesn't have to be a proper loaf shape. This is kind of half loaf shape. I really, really love this one. This really large, extra large one. This one is the biggest one of all. This one is massive and you can see it has a very high domed lid. So you've got a lot of space there if you've got a really nice big high oven spring on your bread, which I love because sometimes your bread can be unpredictable. You don't really know how high it's gonna go. Um, and it's nice and deep. It's got a beautiful shape. It's, it's just gorgeous. However, it is so large, it makes a very, very large loaf of bread. Um, this bread that I showed before, this is actually just the end piece of an olive sourdough loaf I made for a party I went to last night. And it was baked in this, just in some paper. But I used a smaller dough. You could make a much higher dough in this but it would be a very, very large loaf of bread. If you love sandwiches, you know, if you don't want a square sandwich shape, this would actually be a really good option for a really large sandwich loaf. Uh, you can make a nice big sort of slice with this. So this kind of thing would actually be good for families, I think, if you wanted to make sandwich bread. You can proof your dough in these and put it into the oven and just bake it like a regular bread tin. But because this is such a heavy clay material, it takes a while to heat up. It's got great thermal mass, so it'll be, you know, it'll brown the bread really beautifully once it's once it's got going. But I really love the effect of preheating these. So when I bake with this, I tend to proof my dough in this basket just with a baking paper, parchment paper lining. Um, I proof it in there and then I actually preheat this in the oven, make it really, really hot. And then I, I put my dough in and bake it that way and you just get an amazing crust and a really nice oven spring. But you can use these in any way. And you can obviously use these for things other than for bread making as well. So that's it for all the different types of pans I have. I hope you enjoyed that everyone. Great to see you and I'll see you again soon for the sandwich loaf recipe. That will be good. See ya. Sorry for the rushed ending everyone, but I'll definitely be back again soon for a video on how to get the right sized dough recipe for your particular bread tins. So I'll see you then.